It was such a crucial pick for him in oh. the previous best of fives, but instead going to offer the set. Already feels like a change here from Top Esports. Yeah, and we haven't seen set all that much. 369 has actually only picked it up once, and neither support has played it. We'll look towards JDG now, because seeing a change from Top Esports draft on the blue side for JDG, we talk about securing a bottom lane here a lot in the LPL. Again, I'd expect it to be the misfortune. She's so strong in lane. Loken's looked so good on it, had six games. And then here, I think you can just opt into blind picking your jungler. Yep. We do still have the Jarvan open, but oh. I was gonna say, that's actually not really Kanavi style. Oh, but man, we got a story here for you, Gal. Undefeated, nine games played here on this Leblanc. He has not lost a game in spring with this mid lane match. No, and he's looked great on it. And But on the other side for Knight, he's played so many champions this split. You have a lot of good answers that can play against that, whether it's something like a Galio, a Lissandra, a Cassidin. Knight just has so many tools in his kit. And this is going to be one of them here with Lissandra locked in. Lyric, I know you've talked about this a lot. Neutralizes the lane here. That's what you need to do against y Yagao because he starts snowballing these lanes and he gets ahead and he can't stop. Yeah, and we've already kind of seen both teams flesh out a bit of what we know them for. Top Esports is all about getting these lane matchups that they love. Yep. And on the side of JDG, they're, they're already starting to build this comp that can either play front to back, but also has a lot of side lane pressure from that LeBlanc. So I'm looking up towards bands now because I was expecting to see maybe something towards what's left open. Uh, the Brom's going to be banned away by JDG. We're going towards supports here for both teams instead. Yeah, and kind of interesting since Chocho really does change that dynamic. He really loved the Rakan pick in the split, but Rakan, I feel it's not really a bot lane you would think of. Really likes to be paired with more of these kind of scaling, neutralizing supports, which lets him get to the phase where he's really strong. So what else are we going to see here from Top Esports? Because I love the change in the adaptation. Remember, they've been playing on this patch throughout playoffs already, and for Top Esports and JDG, They've made a big adaptation here already in game one. The Morgana's going to be taken away. So we actually haven't seen Chocho play Thresh, but mm. I checked his solo queue. He's been spamming that oh, champion. Really? Pairs very well with the Aphelios. Of course, you have that Lantern to pull him to safety. And that could be the, the hijinks, right? You take out Yuyanja. You know his Thresh will be banned. You put in Chocho, you get that champion anyway. Well, because he doesn't have Leona, he doesn't have his Brahma. I mean, he's getting to that point where it's like, all right, let's go down the list and let's start being a bit more experimental. Let's go towards something that a lot of teams have paired together, especially Jackie Love and Yu Yuan Zhou, as you mentioned. And again, it would just make a ton of sense here. Good to see that from him. You have a lot of pick potential coming from both the Thresh and the Lissandra on the side of top esports. But now for JDG, this does open a lot of a lot of shenanigans. You can't yeah. go for something like that Blitzcrank that they were showing. Dude, it's Lumao. It's exactly. Lumao. So like, if you talk about shenanigans, Blitzcrank fits in there nicely. We'll, we'll see. We've got 10 seconds to decide. And right now they are, so they actually do okay. lock in the Yumi. It's quite a strange pick because, I mean, you hook in Misfortune, you end up getting both a two-for-one special. And again, right now I feel like you're happy if you're TES. So JDG, you're like, okay, then we have to pick up our jungler. How do you round this comp out? You have the Yumi going with that Olaf would be very good. You have a lot of early pressure and skirmishing. And sure. again, we talked about how TS love playing through this early game. You draft these strong early champions and really deny them their strength. Things look good for JDG. But then if we talk about strong picks for top esports, I mean, Cass's Lee Sin. The world knows that Cass's Lee Sin is one of the best out there. Yeah, he's just kept going towards his pick in playoffs. It's looked like one of his best champions. And one thing I can tell you from these drafts straight away, we're going to have a lot of action in this first game. Okay, well, I love action. I mean, I came into this one going, okay, top esports, the strength throughout lanes. JDG, the cleanliness of their play. But how does it interact? And already in game one, the drafts have shown us that this interaction is quite unique. Now, talk me through top esports a little bit here because I see the full on gauge potential with Jackie Love having free run. It's actually pretty interesting because we've known TS as this team that loves to gank top. When you look at this draft, it's all about going mid, pairing up with Knight, and then transitioning that into the bot lane and not letting this Yumi get out of hand. Or I look on the other side and I say, okay, JDG, it does kind of facilitate the play that we've seen before. Zoom on his most played champion in the Orn. Yagao on his most successful champion in the LeBlanc as well. I was going to say, on the side of JDG, it's all about facilitating Kanavi once again. You do have okay. some pressure there in the 2v2 as well. But when you have something like a Yumi, you really want to abuse this bot lane. The Kanavi versus Kasa matchup, they were looking at it on the Chinese side there. They were looking at how these jungles match up. And while the stats favor Kanavi, you have to remember that Kasa here is a six-time champion. Four times in the LMS, twice here in the LPL, both in 2018. 
on RNG. And that's the interesting thing, because we already talked about how a final can really change the way you play. Carsa has been in a final many, many times before. That's right. So you would give the edge of experience over to him. Hey, MSI champion here as well for yeah. 2018, and even going towards Worlds up to the quarterfinals for RNG in the same year. So Carsa has his success, and Kanavi is building his legacy here in the LPL. He only played 10 individual games last year. This is his first full split. And on the side of JDG, he got the MVP, he tore up Spring, and is looking like the best jungler here. Looking to lead JDG to victory. See if Carson has anything to say about it here on Top Esports, the moment before we go into the grand final. Hey guys, it's JRPG. I just want to wish the best of luck to Top Sports for the finals this weekend. Cheers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Summoner's Rift here. The LPL, it has been such a long split. 146 series of best of threes, seven best of fives, and now this grand final in front of us. Finally, our championship contenders come to this point. JDG on Top Esports, we will have a new LPL champion here in 2020 spring with game one before. Honestly, it's really exciting, but also kind of sad if you think about it, that it's going to be over after today, Hysterics. Oh, why did you say that? No, we should be looking happy into this first series. At the very least, we've gotten to the grand final. The four of us have, have really grinded this one out and on the English broadcast again. The big thank you to everyone who's been watching, because now, at the ultimate moment, we get our two best teams of spring going head-to-head -head with, again, drafts that we talked about in Pick Ban seem very iconic of what these teams have been doing throughout the split. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about we should look at the positive, look for something that's exciting. The exciting thing about this game is we should expect to see a lot of attention paid towards the mid lane, okay. especially if you're a fan of TS, that always spells out for something good. But kind of interesting, we didn't get a level one invade coming out from JDG when you have the Yumi and the Olaf instead of opting into standard starts. And I should really like this path from Kanavi going to lead down towards that bottom side. You talked in Pikabana about how JDG want to play around Kanavi. Kanavi has been the most dominant jungler. It's been all about him. Uh, we're looking at some trading here in the top laners. Yeah, that's right, folks. There's also a win streak on the top laner of JDG. And while we're talking up Kanavi, 19 games in a row since Zoom has returned in the LPL. I don't even want to use the term win streak because this split, he is undefeated. You yeah. know, that cannot be overstated. He's done so well. Again, they, they made beating FPX look easy. I mean, the world champions of last year, right? We expected it to be close, and a 3-0 is what came out of JDG. Is One side, there's a uh, win streak, not win streak, because we don't want to quote it. As soon as going to take a massive trade. But on the other side, you look at someone like Jackie Love, who also returning to this roster for Ooh. the side of top esports, brings out a bit of a win streak as well. But Kanavi, as you mentioned, now on the top side. This is the thing that's pretty interesting because, again, we talked about how both of these junglers really want to enable their bot lane. Of course, Set is going to get early push in this matchup, so Kanavi looking for his chance. We've always known Kanavi's the player who likes to gank top. And he's wrapped around here on the tri brush. 369 has the flash available, has to burn it early. The undertow lands, but straight away Kanavi in control this early game. And great gank coming out from him. We know that TS love to help get 369 set up early on and kind of giving Zoom a lot of room to work with where maybe now 369 has to force out a TP. You now can try and get TP advantage. You can try and start moving Zoom over towards the mid lane once he does hit that level six point. But this is interesting because Kasa has pinged that he's actually going to be coming top for a response onto Zoom. And yeah, it's really good because the wave is bouncing back for 369, and we all saw how this went up against IG. Karsa just continuously coming towards Ooh, the top lane. Good Bellows Ooh. breath onto the face breaker though, and Karsa can't land the sonic wave, so that's easy for Zoom. He doesn't lose too much, and the wave ends up pushing as well. But one thing I want to turn our attention to is that bottom lane, okay. where we already see Jackie Love opening up a pretty big CS advantage. And again, once you're at this point in the lane, Yumi and Misfortune are going to be under constant threat from that hook, and it's really going to be about who can make their way down first. We're looking at multiple winning lanes here, of course, across the board for top esports. A lot about the identity, but I know we're really highlighting our players coming through here as well. For Yigao, nine games played, and he hasn't lost either. There's a big highlight on the solo lanes of JDG, which is always nice when you're going up against a lane-dominated team like top esports. 
and especially highlighting the LeBlanc against the Lissandra. It's not really a winning lane for the Lissandra. The word neutralizing fits a lot more. LeBlanc's still going to have her windows where Olaf can come mid. You can set up these kills. You'll be able to rotate the side lanes easily. But of course, Lissandra will always have this TP to match. Well, you talked about uh, we, how we're looking towards Kanavi to come towards this mid lane as well. For the time being, Yigao has been forced back a little bit here, has the teleport to come back in, but the wave's pushing up. In fact, cancels it at the last moment. Glacial path to get away from Knight. He has a nice time to reset here as well. 42 to about 31 CS and counting. You know, and I feel like the kind of pace of the game so far has been pretty good for JDG. Of course, we're only five minutes in, but not a lot of action happening. You got one summoner from TS. And you're going to feel really good if this bottom lane gets time to hit that level 6 power spike. Because before you mentioned how the comps interact, what about in terms of like how we scale, the leads that need to be built up here? Because the top esports already have about 800 gold under their belt. How they transition in the mid game and how does that accelerate throughout the game one? Yeah, so TS are really playing a pick comp. You don't have any, right, you don't have like the Call of the Forge God on your side. All of your lockdown is dependent on Chocho hitting a death sentence or Knight finding a good flank. Okay. So I actually favor the formation in the late game on the side of JDG. You have a lot of peeling potential from the Yumi. You have a lot of long range damage coming out from both the LeBlanc and the bullet time. You also have the Call of the Forge God yourself. So True. that's right. And when you consider the Orn upgrades that can come through as well, especially for someone like Yagao, then potential is definitely there. So I'll keep an eye on that as we progress through this game. I know that our win conditions throughout the series will change massively here. These two teams have been able to diversify their drafts, probably the most in the LPL throughout the regular season. So I'm going to pause on that for now, because Casa has started up on the Infernal Drake down the bottom lane. He was spotted out by a scrying orb previously, and Kanavi is here. And Zoom has TP. He's at base, getting all of his mana back up if JDG want to contest. Ooh, teleport's actually going to be used, so I guess the answer, Lyric, is going to be yes, but too late. Dragon's going to be taken away. Zoom says, where's the money? And top esports win out. Yeah, that's pretty disappointing from JDG where, you know, Kanavi didn't want to overextend too much, but they set up that early play. We talked about how they'd most likely end up with the TP advantage. And in the end, does nothing for them. They still have to blow it. Now 369 going to be able to get a bit of an advantage for himself. Yeah, the wave pushing against him here, just happily sitting back with a 10 CS lead. And Zoom spotted walking all the way back up to re-enter his lane. Uh, note that that CS lead in the top side, again reiterating mid lane with a 10 CS lead too. You mentioned Jackie Love in the early game. Loken has stabilized that a bit and both AD carries now have a bit of a BF sword in pocket. And an interest, interesting thing I want to see is we see on the map right now Loken and Lumao going back to lane. Yumi's not the type of champion who can really roam and look to interact with the rest of the map mm. to where Thresh, of course, is a champion that loves doing that, can look to set up picks in the mid lane with both Knight and Karsa. You have a ton of damage coming out. And what I want to see next is if they can commit to some sort of Herald play without having to bring Jackie Love up. Isn't it ironic, though? You talk about Chocho's ability to roam, where for Lumao, he was one of the best roaming supports in the LPL in the past. That's why things like the Fiddlesticks, the Bard, are also under his wing. But here on the Yumi, sticking around with Loken. And if you're talking about Rift Herald, we've got 25 seconds, so that spawns up towards the top side. Vision controlled by JDG, and the bottom wave actually pushing in, so whether they do or don't have to roam the bottom lane. Exactly. Things look great for TS. Their mids pushing in, 369 controlling the wave very well. We wave. just see them push in, so TS can just head up and take this, what could end up uncontested. I mean, a leisurely stroll is what we'll call it here from Jackie Love and Jojo. They're taking in the sights as they walk through, mid wave pushing up as well. And we saw before for 369 slowly pushing back top light lane as well. Excuse me. And with an even more sizable CS advantage. So for top esports, this is screaming control here in the first 10 minutes of game one. Yeah, but JDG actually are going to look to contest. Okay. We've actually seen JDG do this a lot, where they rotate a bit late, don't actually look to take the objective, but get a much better position for a team fight. And we do have that call of the Forge got up. He also talked about Kanabi. Now I'm looking towards him. Chain's going to land on a 90s half health and has to run away. Ritual getting over all five members. Concrete and getting the Herald secured as Jackie Love now walking up towards Zoom. Good call, the Forge got on tonight. He gets low. Zoom looking for an angle here, but on tonight, who uses the Glacial Prison onto herself? The charge comes through with the kick Ooh. from Casa. Holy moly! The flank now comes through. 369 pulls in Kanavi. One more hit. Jackie Love flushes forward, and the first blood of the grand final goes to JKL. And that looked great. It's so massive for the fact that Jackie Love does have his ultimate 
for this fight. It's just like we talked about, JDG just letting them have the objective, getting a better position for the team fight, but TS having more tools come out ahead. I swear, Cass's leg is covered in butter because Zoom just slid and then got kicked to the side. That was absolutely gorgeous to watch. As for Top Esports now with a 1k gold lead here at 9 minutes. They picked up the Herald, they picked up the earlier Dragon, and they've got so many lanes now that are in great position. And with this Herald, we really want to see them start accelerating Jackie Love. He is the big late game damage dealer on your team. And even though your comp is going to depend a bit on kind of finding these picks, you're always going to have side lane threat with the set. Yeah. And you are in a position where you can really try to get some things done. And especially when you talked about, okay, in the late game, you know, Jackie Love does have that influence as well. We know what Aphelios does, but more importantly, we know what Jackie Love does. BF Sword Berserker Greaves picked up after his first blood. So he's got a bit of gold in his back pocket and he's still controlling this bottom lane as we talked about with Dragon coming up in 120. And it's been so great for them with no junglers really interacting with the bot lane at all. So they just constantly get to push with the kill threat coming out from this duo. And with Dragon coming up in one minute, you're gonna think having this pushing bot lane, we already see Knight has picked up his proto belt. Yep. Top should be in a very good position to get vision for the straight. And Knight almost has the ult up available. Remember, there are a couple of summoners, but Knight included in that first blood. Uh, Jackie Love doesn't have either of his, nor does Chocho. So I guess the one advantage here is that Yagal has flash, Loken has flash to set up some big key plays in front of this next objective. And the thing we've already talked about is we want to see JDG play a bit from a range with the distortion coming out from the LeBlanc, yeah. with the bullet time coming in from the Misfortune, hopefully set up by a great call of the Forge God from Zoom. And as long as you have your jungle swept out, Knight should really have no way of going in and you shouldn't feel any threat from JD, like as JDG to engage. Yeah, seeing the pr uh, prediction on the Glacial Path, really important to Lissandra, remember. You see where Knight's coming from, you can avoid the path as you just mentioned from Knight. So, Kasa right now, pathing through the mid lane himself. Knight has the shove here once again onto the top of Yagao. Aftershock is a bit of a pain here, but Double Chain's gonna come through while Kasa says it's safeguard time into Sonic Wave, but he's not gonna take the resonating strike and Knight will just walk away free. Well, what's happening up here? Teleport being used as Zoom is like, I'm getting collapsed upon. Knight was low at half health, but now locks down. The Bellows Breath not available for Zoom, but the Call of the Forge God is. Knight is pretty low, but at the right time, the showstopper used, and down Zoom will go. It's actually really interesting that they go for this topside play when they just got all of the setup for Dragon, but still great kill coming out, and it's going to set you up for hopefully what is an Ocean Soul. Oh. Okay, we, and think, there we go. We like Ocean Soul here. Well said, Mr. Lyric, the best of the souls on Summoner's Rift. And if we're talking about setup yet, yet again, and when you talked about the side lane control that can come through from this set, 369 with Blade of the Ruin King is really accelerated here in the early game. Exactly. He's going to do really great just matching up into Zoom in the sides. We've already said how if he does want to come in uh, for a team fight, he needs to look for a flank regardless or rely on someone on his team setting him up. So I really like this build coming out from him. And it's always going to give TS a point of pressure to try to turn that into vision for an objective. Okay, well, if we uh, mention objectives yet again here, 4 minutes 20 till the next one, but this, more importantly, is Rift Rolled up in top side. Kasa giving more gold to 369. Zoom is up here, but without, an ult, without a real big way to deter, more gold in the back pocket of this already 30 CS lead on 369. And I actually love the way that TS are playing this because they're not only going for this split map play. We saw their bot lane safely recalled knowing, hey, Kanavi can be on our side of the jungle. We don't want to get dove. And they're actually going to head to the mid lane and just full on pressure the top side of the map. Really stereotypical top esports play. Strength to the solo lanes here from Casa. Knight and 369 get a second charge on the inner turret. And look at JDG. They're saying, we're going to commit to the bottom lane here with Loken and Lumao, try and get some turret plating ourselves, but Jackie Love and Chocho rotate in the meantime, and the rotation, that to use that word a third time, doesn't stop towards the mid lane. And the better part is, now they have Tempo heading towards the mid lane so they can threaten even more plates. We see Karsa behind. I mean, this is huge, Lyric. What an early start for top. It's funny because we saw this as the Brain versus Braun matchup, but TS playing out the macro game so well so far. And they've got a bit of brawn on their side as well. I can see them flexing right now. 3k gold lead 
the Silly Cat. And this is how we always differentiated them from other teams that play through individual skill. Teams like, let's say, Sooning or IG is mm. that when it comes to essentially transitioning into mid-game, TS have always looked, not always, but since Jackie Love's come in, yeah. always looked really good at uh, this. The voice that they needed, the voice of reason, but also the voice of consistency, right? And Jackie Love as well brings that individual flair that we saw in IG. We're kind of getting back into the the minutiae of the game, especially now that Yigao hasn't been able to find an advantage on this LeBlanc, we're actually going to see that TS are going to be able to control both side lanes and just consistently look to roam towards that mid lane and try and set up a pick, especially with all the CC coming out from Knight. Do you need to start itemizing towards Yigao then? Because you expect 369 to be the one to match. Yeah. I, I feel like you're fine just itemizing for the team as a whole. You're already up. You already have the Proto Belt. So, again, you're looking to kind of split the maps, create these small team fights with your Lissandra. Okay. But meanwhile, Castle's going to be starting on the second Rift Herald. Taking everything here is a whole Chocho. It's about half a second from capturing the Yumi in Luomao. It was a very dangerous place to back, but after that, after seeing the cat back with another Herald on the cards and control of mid, Top Esports are looking to accelerate this and continue the ball rolling. And TS are going to have a really easy time using this Herald for the fact that they control both sides because you can just look to reset right now, get back on the map, put put down new vision, help Knight push out, rotate mid, drop that Herald, and bam, mid turret is open. You now have full control of the map. Look across the board. I mean, again, expectations set here that JDG, with the way they came through the semifinals, that JDG was looking like the cleaner team right now. Where do the options lie? Because just coming back to what you said at the start of the game with Kanavi, who wanted to play through mid, but well, there hasn't been much jungle interaction, nor has there been much jungle-jungle interaction from Kanavi and Kasa. Yeah, it's really interesting where you do have set up in a lot of your lanes, but of course Kanavi's on Olaf, so he can just look to power farm and try to be stronger in the skirmishes. But for Karsa, he just knows, hey, all of my lanes are winning, all of my lanes are pushing, I can just focus on neutrals and try to come out ahead in these skirmishes. It's worked out well for him. What he's been doing is about half a level ahead, now sitting with Jackie Love and Chocho in the mid lane. Remember that Rift Herald is in his back pocket. And Loken and Lumao don't have that much in the ways of wave clear right now either. Herald's gonna go down, three members stay mid, side lanes under that keyword again, control. And here it comes. Yep, they're gonna be able to pick up this one very easily. And uh, now Yagao's gonna feel a lot of pressure in that bottom lane since now TS can just hover towards that side. And going back to something you've already talked about a little bit, the Lissandra build, we do see her going for that Zanyas because she, know, she knows she's one of the main engagers in this composition where, again, really your only other option is at that sentence. And you look towards the consistent damage that's gonna come through from Logan as well. It's gonna help a bunch. Just Kasa over the wall, getting a bit cheeky. Double chain comes through. The auto won't be enough, of course. Dark Passage from Chocho, but he might have just exposed himself. Has to flush over the wall. And JDG feels like they got something right in front of the next objective. Yeah, great job by JDG. A bit, a bit greedy by Karsa. He knew that Yagao was there. He's the one that forced him back, getting chunked out. But great job from the other members. Now it doesn't matter that 369 is full pressure topside. You could look to TP for zoom to TP, make him lose CS. Because guess what? JDG get the dragon. And remember, it's a 4K gold lead. So for top esports, they give away anything. JDG are going to start taking some of these bounties, start clearing away some more of these fed members. And when we mentioned the Ocean Soul before, that's two dragons away for JDG. So this is a grand final setting. Nerves always kick in here. This is the first grand final for top esports, second for JDG. Looking for our brand new contender in spring. And despite the fact that we said JDG have been in this position before and TS haven't, you have a world champion and MSI champion on your side. Yep. Again, these two have so much experience being in positions like this before, and especially when you have Jackie Love on that Aphelios. We've all seen what Aphelios can do in the later stages of the game. Oh, a lyric I promised I wouldn't talk about it. I said that was it in the semifinals. I said I'd leave it at the door, but yes, I know. The experience especially comes through from that champion. However, at this point, I want you to notice that it is first item for first item. We're getting to the point where the next dragon will be up in four minutes. We've got a Baron spawning in two. Jackie Love and Chocho have been sitting mid with Infinity, Infinity Edge of Belios. That S3 is still on Logan. And mid is really going to be the place where we want to look for JDG to try to get back in this game. You know, we have about a 4K gold advantage for TS, but we yep. see Karsa doing a great job of shadowing for his strong side in Knight. So if I'm JDG, Zoom has to say, okay, I'm going to give up some side waves 
Two, three, six, nine, gonna back and walk straight mid and try to force this straight 5v5 or numbers advantage fight. Uh, important to see that clean respect from 369, right? Backs all the way to the turret. Gonna be spotted on a deep ward that's put in here. Kanavi now gonna be clearing it away, but 369 has already backed. Pings are getting spammed. Top esports are like, okay, let's race them. We have four. Yeah, and both teams right now just playing around their strong side, but TS having such a massive tempo advantage, great recall coming out from 369. And just to clear the wave here, Lyric, call the Forge God. We'll do exactly that, and that slows the tempo, importantly enough. Exactly, it worked, but still, it is a tier one for tier two trade, so TS are gonna feel really good for this, especially when they're the team that has pressure in size. Are gonna be going down, JDG, at least getting something here, right? At this point, Carso, as you mentioned, still shadowing there, and they've enabled really deep vision on that red side. You can see the control wars throughout. As Castle returns, Aftershock means, yes, you're going to have Demolish in your kit. That's 200 gold, a peak tick going down on top eSports. Again, that gold now at 5,000, 320 minutes. This is a grand final. This is game one of the grand final, and top eSports are making it look clinical so far. And I love a second ago that you pointed out all that deep vision in the bottom half of the map. Of course, the teams did trade sides, but... JDG's comp is not at a point where it can just look to do some kind of rush Baron. So having all that vision topside doesn't mean all that much. And the next neutral we do plan to look for is that next dragon. Which JDG picked up the last two, right? So well, that last one through mistake of Casa, where JDG found an opening, which is great. Uh, I need you to reiterate for me, Lyric, here, because we are in a very important game setting. For JDG, it's about slowing the pace at this point, or do you need to look for these picks here to kind of find your way back in the spot? We want to see JDG, again, give up whatever side Zoom's trying to contest. You wait for 369 to go to that bot lane. You just walk straight mid, try to open up a fight with that call of the Forge God. Whether it forces out a TP from 369 or you can get a full-on pick, okay. that's really what JDG need to rely on at this point. Because, again, we're talking about scaling and things like this. TS have a 4K gold lead, right? So any fight, any 5v5 fight that happens right now, TS should just be expected to come out ahead. When you're not going to expect too much damage coming out of this Warlock at this point. We're Logan as well, but hang on. If the Felios, he has shurikens. Knight's going to be passing through. Kadavi now going to spot him out. The Baron at half health. Remember, Knight just used the Glacial Path. The Jackalove getting out of the back of the pit. Knight is locked on down here. He uses the two onto himself. Exhausted away, flashes away as well. But the kick comes through from Caster. The re-engage, call the Forge God. You wanted to see it. It's on top for Caster. And JDG right back with the full time lined up. 369, a very late TP. He gets zoomed into the back line, but he doesn't die. Flashes away while Knight has no mana here. Yagao says thank you for the slow. And Knight says thank you for the dark passage over the wall. Four versus four here. Chocho Ooh. gets one shot. And Jackie Love slowed on down. Loken consistent. Flushes himself. 80 carry blood. Finds its victim here. 369 under the turret will get close. But he can only watch as his team crumbles. Still, that's a massive win for the side of JDG. But this isn't over. Okay, we expected some blood. Now we're finally getting it. It's going to end there. Knight does TP to the mid lane to help get the shove is up solo lane. Exactly. That was a great TP coming from Knight to create this tempo advantage, meaning that TS get to turn towards Dragon first. So all those picks not amounting to much in the end. But this is so strange from TS when we said they're fine waiting for that next Dragon getting the setup. They don't need to force a sort of barren play and give JDG a good angle to find an engage on them. Zoom, of course, coming in first. Great call of the Forge yeah. God. Knight has already blown absolutely everything. So the rest of this is pretty easy from the side of JDG. I mean, you set it up so well, Lyric. You wanted to see Zoom there first, essentially, and there he was. 369 TP's in later. Well, and we said we wanted to see JDG have to be in a position where they need to go first, where they need to give up sideways. They didn't really need to give up anything because so. TS gave them that. And now we're at a point where, okay, gold may still be up there, but for JDG, you see how this composition starts to work. You see what happens now that Zoom draws the attention and damage from the side of top esports. And JDG, like Yagao and Loken, able to free move through the fight. 2 1 and 1 now on the Misfortune with an Infinity Edge. Almost second item here for Yagao as well with the Oblivion Orb. Let's see if that gets upgraded. I know uh, we a long story about that one, but we'll see. But moving over to the other side, we also see that Jackie Love has both of his items, and this is the big point where Aphelio starts becoming such a menace in these team fights. Moving up to the top side, we see the upgraded uh, Iceborne Gauntlet for Zoom, just saying, hey, Knight's damage is not really going to be a factor. As long as I could survive Jackie Love, we can win these fights. He's also level 14, so that means the Molten Edge comes through for Loken on top of that as well. So we're starting to get these ornaments coming through from the top laner of JDG. 
Also want to note, while we are talking top laners in that last fight, 369 did find some success and also has the second item, plus the building towards the dead man's plate first. Yeah, and uh, everything looking pretty standard item-wise. And now yep. we're at a point where, again, if this was maybe another region, you could say, okay, there's going to be a lull in the game. We're going to wait for Dragon once again. <laughs> but <laughs> no. we saw what happened last time, and both teams do have sides that they can play around. Again, we want to see JDG playing around this pressure from Yigao. And for TS, it's all about Karsa and Knight. Look towards Karsa and Knight when they first came into the split. Expectations weren't there. I'm going to pause on that. Because Knight and Cast are going to meet up here with Kanavi and Lumao. And just on a different note, we are now seeing the Yumi roam around with Kanavi. Yeah, and it's actually really great to see them applying this pressure because Yigao does have TP advantage over 369, so he's always able to follow if JDG are able to force something. 369 going to be stuck down in that bot lane. Right now, just waiting for someone to react, but everyone's here. Cast are in a, I guess, a flanking Ooh. position as Knight. Just gets hit pretty hard. Glacial Path to help clear out the wave. Well, Carson now shows himself, but Knight burnt out like that. Means mid turret could just be gone, or maybe at least a set up towards Dragon. And this, this is point. really good from JDG Hysterics because we talked about how JDG want to find these advantages from a range, right? Have LeBlanc poke in. Maybe if you can find either a Q from Yumi or if Zoom is there, Call of the Forge God, setting up a big bullet time from Loken, dealing all the damage before Knight or Chocho -Cho or 369 are even able to get close to you. All right, Larry, 25 minutes in this game. At this point, Top Esports still the lead there here in game one of the grand finals. 25 minutes means at this point, we're still sitting with Baron, but we're coming towards the third and the sole point dragon here in two minutes' time. And we actually see a lot of teams neglect dragons that aren't exactly the soul, but I think picking up soul point is massive and gives you such a, like, advantage and pressure yep. how you can force around the map because the team is like, oh, God, we cannot give this up. And it gives you a lot of avenues around playing for either other objectives, like top lane turrets or Baron, etc. If we talk about ignoring objectives, like, in the past, JDG have been that team where it's like, okay, we'll ignore the Baron, we'll go for Elder, right? We're yep. happy to make trades here because we know what we can do when we apply the pressure. Pretty smart trade for those objectives as well, but yep. that's what I love about JDGs. We'll see them. It's a bit of a mistake because we see them give up mid wave a lot. Okay, there's the showstopper. Zoom is pretty tanky, but he knows he has Knight on the way. The prison locked on down. Teleport's going to be coming in, but will Zoom still be alive? He survives long enough. TP's here. It's your gal on top of Knight. The ultimate to come through. Zoom's still alive. They've used everything here on the tank. And now with the knockup, now locked on down 369, will fall to his demise. Your gal looking for Knight still. Over the wall, he'll find himself with the glacial path. Yigao, not too much mana here. But over the wall, again, Kanavi runs into Knight. And the rest of the team enabling Kanavi was the condition. And this guy's ready to roll. Jackie Love with his escape, Baldi. But JDG keep finding picks. Yeah, JDG could have a very good setup to try to get this mid lane turret and then probably turn that into a dragon. You are all a bit low, so looking for something like a Baron while Aphelios and uh, Karsa are still alive would be a bit hasty, but hey, we've seen JDG be, be hasty before. You could bait it in, your gal could find something. Karsa found out here with the Undertow yet again. This Yumi Olaf is so punishing. Karsa slowed down, and away he goes. And I love what JDG are doing here, just pushing in this wave. They're gonna get some vision control down, still finding the poke. And now it's all about the reset timings because guess what? Dragon's up in 20 seconds, but you'd think that TS should be able to get here first. They're still on the map. Still on the map, but not going there yet. We'll have a look at this one because Zoom just takes so long to die. Yeah, and just great play from him. We do see Knight coming down. He's doing a great job surviving. And here we actually see the rest of TS peeling towards topside, expecting JDG just to commit to a full-on map split. But JDG say, hey, we don't need to do that. Yagao is TP. The rest of our <laughs> members rotate first. And we see it pans out so well. Dude, Orn is a tank assassin everything, right? Like, this is just the story of Orn. The master of all. And for Zoom, a nice heal from Loki to keep him alive, rather the Yumi is. We look towards bottom lane, we're fighting again, the bullet time used. And Jackie Love's like, someone help me, call the Ford God. Means no, Whoa. he gets clapped by Zoom with a massive shutdown. And JDG say enough is enough. The kick backwards here. They've kited backwards here as well. But Logan with a kill on the other side. Well, Cast is just trying to live around to the side. Sonic Wave, resonating strike. Zoom finally dies. It was a slide and dice that time around. But JDG still came out on top with a three for one. And what a massive engage by Zoom. This is why he does so well on this Orn pick. And things looked a bit dicey for me when we saw Logan's bullet time pretty much completely with, but it went back to what you said about Orn pretty much being an assassin. 
deleting Jackie Love oh. and giving JDG the team fight win. And now we got pings on the Baron here. Jackie Love up in five seconds, but Cuff's not here for 15. Your gal's coming in, and this Baron going down quick enough. JDG, not only are they back in the game, they're in the driver's seat. They kick top esports out of the car. And this has been absolutely amazing to see. JDG fell behind 4,000 gold. Dude, but it was like five or six almost. Yeah, right? but TS giving them the opportunities, all pretty much starting from that one rushed Baron. But here we see it. Again, Zoom coming in for this TP, finds the engage onto Jackie Love. And again, this bullet time from Loken doesn't do much. You do force out the flash, but ooh, I actually missed that. Yagao doing a ton of damage to Jackie Love as well. And now the members of TS are just split up. You have this... Uh, three-man squad dealing with 369, and you've already seen how tanky Zoom is. Kanavi just ab enabled by that, able to try and find these kills. When JDG are grouped up, Lyric, it just feels like JDG are the smooth the team, even when they're separated in the middle of the fight. Communication's still there. So for JDG now, they had the gold lead in this game. Well, I this, mean, what a great start. This is also why I said when it comes to scaling, I do favor JDG when it comes to the formation that these team fights are going to take, right? Mm. It's a lot harder to play out TS's comp and, like, because all of your damage is on Jackie Love, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about enabling Jackie Love, but when you have no avenues of getting in or peeling for him other than. Oh, Ragnarok going to come through, but that's a three man distortion. Bit of damage onto Yagao as well, and he's back there, LeBlanc, with some shenanigans. So. A good moment for top esports. You still see what the earlier gold has done. But JDG with Baron, they run right back to the mid wave. They're pushing in for in and out, taking the outer. And that gold's accelerated to 2k. And let's remember that Kanavi is Olaf. He can just go press W on some camp. He will be full HP. And now it's about seeing Zoom push out that bot side and roll mid like he's doing now. Again, you always have the threat of Call of the Forge God. And these distortions coming in from the Yao are so clutch. The Orn who earlier in lane wasn't that influential, but has started becoming the core gift for JDG. This is moved to mid -light, mid wave, excuse me. JDG are pushing now with all five members. Top Esports respect that. They back away. 369 now groups up as well. And this is what I love about JDGs. They have such a good understanding of like their comp and their win conditions, knowing, hey, we don't need to leave Zoom in the side lane. Let's roam mid. We see Yigao constantly trying to not burst, but poke down the targets from TS, making it so they have to back, and then JDG can just take the structure themselves for free. There is enough of a death sentence there from Chojo, but maybe the sentence comes back from JDG. Enough wave clear, I was going to say, from Jackie Love here with the Infernum, but thank you. They're going to push forward anyway. Inhibitor now exposed, and when JDG accelerate, they really accelerate. It's looked so good, and like you said, we're pretty much 3k gold in the lead, and now Soul Point, this is going to be the, the big point, the big testing grounds <laughs> for top esports. And Dragon up in a minute and a half, so we're going to see JDG get their side lanes in order, get those resets, start getting vision down for the Drake, and we're pretty much going to be at the deciding team fight. If we get to the Ocean Soul at the very least, and top esports don't want to fight, that feels like they're going to slowly die out from there. You mentioned how this game progresses and how much easier it is for JDG to use these multiple damage sources and how relevant Zoom has and will become. We're top eSports. It's looking pretty hard now, but it ain't over just yet. It's only game one. And for top eSports, you've got to look at the key items that have been picked up with Knight, who Banshee's Valzonia's Hourglass. If he can kill Loken, if he can get your gal, these fights look pretty winnable for top. Yeah, but it's going to be pretty tough to just get on them again. Loken's always going to have Loom out right on top of him, giving yep. him all the heals you need, so bursting him out is going to be pretty hard. And if you're Knight and you're going into JDG, that leaves Jackula very vulnerable, and you'll only have Chocho peeling for him. Yagao, let's not forget, nine out of nine wins on this champion, right? That's what we started saying at this game. Uh, I and I was like, say, oh my god, Yagao with his first loss on LeBlanc, maybe not. I'm pretty disappointed in the fact that JDG banned out Syndra, but TS did yeah. ban out LeBlanc, because give me the skill matchup between these longtime friends. But, I mean, like, we got the Knight says, I'm going to neutralize this time around. And we did get earlier influence from Knight, especially towards those earlier fights as well. Uh, we're just watching JDG run across this map and accelerate Ooh. this lead. A TP. Now behind. Your gal's not being spotted out for Ocean Soul. It's a response TP as well. Yeah, 369 would be so clutch, but what? The dragons just gone. This one I said Ocean Soul is gone. And 369 is running. This running man is gonna get rammed here by a Norse god. Over the wall he flashes, and 369 looking like Angel right now. That call was so confusing, so indecisive by TS, where they, they were posturing like they wanted to contest. We see the TP come out, and then we see Jackal going, oh, I need to go answer this topside wave. Now, how are you ever going to kill Zoom 
or even Kanavi or any member that Dude, Yumi's Logan on top of. Dude, has BT, QSS, and even before the Mercurial Scimitar. And Yumi. And Yumi and an Ocean Soul. And as I've said many times in many other broadcasts, Ocean Soul wins games. Very often do you see teams win against it. And from an early game where top esports look so clean, so crisp, JDG have found these fights. They've walked back into this game one. And now they're looking like they're the ones who are finding opportunities to try and close this one out. And it's going to be even better for Yagao to just keep poking his head in these siege scenarios, whittling him down little by little. Yep. And again, Loken, Loken should feel so fine to even just walk up aggressively in these fights because he has Lube Mouse <laughs> heals, he has the Ocean Soul. Yeah. I mean, he's just doing it right like now, said, right? Like Bloodthirster as well, right? Yeah. How is he ever going to lose HP? How will you kill the misfortune? Kanavi's like, bro, you remember me from the early game? It took some time, but now here I am. Dodges away from the death sentence. Walking in, one versus three, because Zoom walks down. And Frank the tank here, the Orn, is going to help you, Gal. It's called the Forge God, you're going to come through. That's going to get a two-man knockup on the back end. Everyone running forward. JDG, Zoom finds a two-man knockup. The bullet time in the choke. Everyone to go in vulnerable. But that just means top esports are delaying the inevitable. While 369 is watching his team burn. Flush over the wall. Your gal feeling it now. Jekyllar will do the exact same. And JDG can only run forward. The searing charge as well. Knight against the Nexus. From zero to hero. And half past 12. Top Esports getting charged down. A double kill over to Loken. 5-1-4. and four. He says this game is mine. Lyric, this went pretty damn fast. Pretty quick. As JDG challenged. Top East wants to take game one. It ended out of absolutely nowhere with Zoom leading the charge. I don't know how my heart can take more of this because that was so back and forth. And at least for JDG coming out and showing us why they're in this position to take that game one. Well, and we saw kind of the good from both teams. We saw TS picking up those lanes that they feel comfortable in getting the early game advantage. Yep. But then this is also why Munchables called JDG the smartest team in the LPL because they took such advantage of the mistakes from TS and snowballed it so quickly. In the battle of brain over brawn, it was a lot of a lot of the brain for top esports to start us off. But then the brawn showed and the brains came back for JDG. And I have to say there, like the compositions that you laid out so nicely really came into fruition for JDG, and we could see how they accelerated the game to finish off. And this does look like a competitive grand final, but if JDG ever get an inch in the game, they take the full mark. And we saw that even from the stats that were highlighted before with their uh, their Baron turnover, right? Getting 4,000 gold yeah. from that. So we see now, if you even make one small misstep, JDG are just going to end the game. And we saw 369's flake at the end. They did not expect that. They haven't lost the game with Zoom. They haven't lost the game on Yigal for long. He's now 10-0 and zero on that champion. And Zoom is now 17-0. No, sorry, 20-0. and zero. He just keeps going up and up. And at this point, I have to say, for JDG to turn that one around when it looks Zoom was mighty impressive. And also really impressive to see some of these picks come out like the Yumi out of nowhere. Yeah. Having full confidence in their bottom lane to, you know, not feel pressured from the kill lane from Thresh, knowing, hey, our comp can play out these late game team fights much better. Yeah. And again, they pulled it off. I know there's a lot to dissect here. And, uh, you know, when we do get to that point of breaking down game one, we'll delve into it a bit deeper. But at this point, 